My name's Russ Cook and I'm attempting to become the first person ever to run the entire length of Africa. This is where I started, this is where I'm heading and this is where I am now. I've run 8,085 kilometres so far and I've got 8,515 left to go. So far on the mission. I've survived alone in the desert, pissed blood, been robbed at gunpoint, thought I was going to be killed in the jungle, had my support van smashed to bits and raised 86,000 quid for charity. In this episode, Stan and Jamie return, Gus gets detained by the police, we drink palm wine and a mechanic attempts to save our petrol infested van. We're nearly home, literally one hour away from the entire debacle, like a 2,000 kilometre journey. And then we fill up at a petrol station and the guy puts petrol in the van instead of diesel, even though we have the diesel. And now Nelly might be literally dead forever. How are you feeling though? <laughs> we have another vehicle. We can tow ours into town if that's easier. We can tow ours to you. We need to get the petrol out of the tank. Okay, perfect, thank you. With our newest team member James meeting Stan and Jamie in person for the first time, this was far from an ideal introduction. All hands were on deck to tow our beloved van Nelly to the mechanics to assess potentially fatal damage and to discover whether she could be resuscitated back into life. After all the boys had been through to get Nelly this far, it'd be sod's law to have her die on the sword like this. We shouldn't get our hopes up. I'm absolutely getting my hopes up, man. No, 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 I actually don't get it. Yeah, there is actually no fuel tank attached to the vehicle. The fuel tank's right there. Is it attached? They attached it earlier. I don't think it's attached. I can do Although these mechanics were working in unison to revive our fallen beast, the stakes were well and truly catastrophic. We set off to our hotel for the night, dreaming of hearing her angelic roar once more, leaving Gus and Jamie behind. The mission as we know it could be over. Once again, she f***ing made it. <laughs> and we was a bit tight there. <laughs> Started the day off yesterday with so much hope and expectation. Oh, I know, mate. So basically, we thought the van was dead. The mechanic was a bit of a machine, to be fair. I just walked, like, saw him throughout the day, just like spitting petrol out, sucking it up. Like he was, f what a bloke. Yeah, he was huge. He was tall. He was white. He was probably so massive because he eats petrol for breakfast, lunch, and yeah. dinner every single day of the week. He seemed to do some miracle on Nelly. She drives again now. Hopefully she will be all right, but I don't know if we'll wait and see. Today, we've had loads of bullshit checkpoints, people trying to rob us at checkpoints. Hilariously, the last checkpoint, they were trying to fine us for not wearing a seatbelt. Maybe we'll just insert some photos of some of the driving antics that we've seen <laughs> in Nigeria. Like, it's actually comical that they would try and do that. So, we yeah. picked possibly the worst stretch of road to drive back and forth yeah, in time yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Really? The amount of checkpoints, like some you say, check someone points. tried to grab the camera yesterday. Yeah, you roll down the window a little bit, you know, you don't know if you're going to get a proper guard or you're going to get someone that's going to come and try and rob you, like who knows. A lot of time's been wasted, so I'm going to get back on road. Right, best of luck kid. See you later mate. I was keen to finally get cracking, but I was rudely interrupted by a needy stand. Mate, what are you doing? Mate, I'm watching footy highlights. But you can only do that in the UK. Stan, I'm a massive cheapskate. Yeah, mate, um, speaking of, are we going to be getting paid shh, soon? Shh, 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 shh. What? Shh, shh. But I need a VPN to watch all my favourite shows anywhere in the world and securely encrypt my data with cutting edge cyber technology. I don't want to pay for that. I want it for free. So let me tell you a little secret. Surfshark is offering six months free for Black Friday using the code Geezer at checkout is the truth. So be like me, a total cheapskate, sign up to Surfshark today. So uh, when are we getting paid? Hey, day. After putting Stan in his place, I was hoping and praying for a productive outing this time around. A brand new day was upon us and I was more than ready for the assignment. As I reached my morning pit stop, James and Gus were getting a little lively. We're gonna try something new for James. They call it palm wine. They cut down a palm tree, they take the juice and then they ferment it. They don't cool it, so it's like this warmish drink. You can tell by the way that Gus is describing it, yeah? How nice it is. It's lovely, eh, Gus? It's beautiful drink. 
and you have no idea how strong it is either because they're just making it up. Only when they mix it, like sometimes they mix it with like cleaning spirits, then it gets a bit strong. You all notice it, it has a strong taste when they do that. It's from England. It's an energy drink. More, more strength makes it strong. <laughs> We get this, it's a natural palm wine from the tree. You give us palm wine, we give you perfect taste. Sounds like a good deal. It's natural. Mm, tastes very natural. Yes. Very nice one. It's not fizzy. Yes. I have to say, it's probably like one of the nicest. They even filter it for us. It's like more actual wine. Is it alcohol in there? Yes. Yeah. No, I don't think it's I actual. think it's about 15%, probably, if I would estimate. That's okay. good. Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> Let me climb. I'm going to climb. Yeah, oh, nice. you see, we use this to plumb it, this way. So they just showed us the, the more sustainable way to, to make palm wine. Often they just cut down the whole tree, but here they're smart. They keep the tree, they climb to the top, they make a small hole and collect it. That way they have the tree for many, many years. That's fresh palm wine. Oh, this one is sweet. Yeah, they didn't put it on the mix water inside. Very good. Although spending the day drinking palm wine with my newfound mate seemed incredibly appealing, I had to cut our time short to get back on road for some more ferocious ones and twos. The day was going swimmingly, which could mean only one thing. Hello, Stanley. Hi. As usual, it's us left to deliver the bad news. It is. You might have been expecting roughs after that little lovely running montage, but no, roughs is with James, and he is at the police station with the 4x4 getting a ticket for having the steering wheel on the other side of the car, which is really fucking annoying. Meanwhile, I just got a phone call from Gus, who I believe was at a checkpoint and had the machete out in his hand and they confiscated it from him. And he was like, Fuck this. So he stayed behind to argue and try and get it back. And then now they've detained him for having a machete in Africa. Me and James successfully avoided spending our night behind Nigerian steel with the help of a long-time supporter of the mission, Benjamin Franklin. We met back up with Stan and Jamie, eager to hear what the updates were on our machete man. What's the gun then? Do you know how he stayed behind at the deck like yeah. the machete man? Yeah. Well, he did a bit of Googling and he realised that it was like some level of it being illegal, punishable by up to a year in prison. Right? At first, he, he stayed behind voluntarily to try and get the machete back. Now, he's been like seven to ten. Oh no. We've already just been to the piece. I know, they're really giving a sh to those people. Yeah. Oh. I needed to get some rest, so we agreed that Stan and James should go back to see if they could somehow sweeten up the checkpoint guards that were detaining Gus. Right, Russ, what have we just heard? It all sorted, apparently, so who knows what's happened, mate? Gus free. <laughs> Someone's got chin. <laughs> Someone's got chin. Yeah. This required a bit of chit chat, some footy banner, and a loaded handshake. Oh, no, Stan ain't got any footy banner in the <laughs> He's either does nothing about a booty, so. As James, do you know? James does, to be fair. Maybe Stan came in with a handshake, James came in with a footy banner, and that was that. Yeah. Sweet as lad, I'll uh, see you in a bit, mate. The day couldn't have been more stop-start if we wanted it to. However, with 40 k's already tucked away in the bread bin, it was time to get another loaf before dark. Gus was now a free man again, so he joined me for my last 10k. Oh, okay. Cheers. <laughs> with yet another action-packed day, we could now relax. We were greeted by these locals who kindly invited us into their village for the night. Holy oh, shit. Stanley back on camera. I'm back, bitch. You're back. And you look at least 13 years old now. 13 years old. I, I was thinking maybe like nearly 15. You look like one of them year 11s that has like started growing facial hair. Everyone. It's like, fuck. You know, he looks old. Yeah, see, you can roast me all you want, but the internet loves it, so. <laughs> yeah, so basically, we're in this village. They were really friendly to us. After a day of getting hassled by bullshit people. Yeah, quite extensive bullshit. Yeah, yeah. so that was kind of nice. It was like karma working its way back around. Because I was like, Nigeria's fucking me off, blah, 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 blah. And then we came here and everyone was really nice. I had two beers. Every, they gave us all beers. Ross is trying to hide it, but you could just see behind the eyes. It was, I was just in a nice state of relaxed. Now you've had a chance to settle in. We got told pretty much by everyone that we passed overlanders on the way up mm. that Nigeria was going to be shit. 
Do you think that it's lived up to the expectation? I think objectively, Nigeria is probably quite dangerous, but I feel all right about it because most of them speak English and I can speak English, so that's fine. Most of them, 95% of them, very friendly. Even the ones that aren't that friendly, they're just f***ing hustling. Well, it's honestly one of my favourite countries. Definitely the favourite favorite country we've been in for a while. You've spent your first night in Nelly today. Yeah, and I was a little bit concerned about how she would smell because I was wondering if she smells anywhere close to the way she looks. I was in for a little bit of a shot, but I can confirm she smells absolutely delightful. Enjoying being back, Jamie. Mm. That was a weird reaction to that question. <laughs> We've been through a lot of stress, man. Even this, like yesterday, we got stopped a bunch of times. Just got detained. James had some issues, but I just felt so much calmer because of all the sh we went through. <laughs> Honestly, it feels like a, a holiday now, doesn't it? It kind of does. It's nice. Let's it's nice. see how long that lasts. With another 60k on the menu, I left the boys to catch up and compare PC processing speeds. He's back. Fuel and biscuits, mate. All the man needs. I already am eating better in Africa than I do back at home. So yeah, I can believe that, to be fair. Mm -hmm. Go on then, cut me a slice of that. Look at Russ Cook eating fruit. I think I don't, his mum like will be proud. I think so. Have I ever seen you eat fresh fruit? Seen you eat canned fruit? I don't think I've ever seen you eat fresh fruit. He likes it better when it's like filled with like chemical toxic stuff and like sugars. Uh, no, the main sugar. the main thing is that it's cut up for him and is actually clean, certified, not got shit inside of it, maggots. It doesn't take much for these things to go a bit wrong. I always clean your fruits before eating. Don't be like me. Actually, I washed this fruit kind of yesterday. So kind of. <laughs> what do you mean by kind of? Well, uh, I run out of water halfway process. <laughs> a muddy puddle, that's what he means. <laughs> <laughs> I've missed Gus's rogueness. I was like, oh, you know, haven't had anyone just like wander into the forests and find a crazy thing to do or whatever. And then first day we get back, Stan, they've detained me because I was <laughs> running with a machete. I'm like, oh, it's good to be back. <laughs> Why were you running with a machete? I've been accused for running with a machete. I deny all accusations. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you're not even meant to run with scissors. What is this? Did you see, Russell, that we hit £70,000 on the gift start? Yeah, we day, eh? Yeah. But those members of our audience who don't know what we're on about, what is going on? Whoa! We are raising money for charity, girls and boys. We have been this whole time, but some people don't know about it still. We've raised £70,000 so far, which is incredible and it will change a lot of lives. But I think we can do more. I think we can do better. I think we can hit that 100 foul. If you'd like to donate, it'd be much appreciated. The link is below. Nice one. Okay, it's nice to meet all of you. Okay. I'll see you later. Now we see. Uh, God bless you. God bless you too, sir. Yeah. Amen. Boosted by the love and support shown by the locals and a belly full of muddy melon, I smashed out the last case of the day, furthermore waging my war against the African Tarmac Network. When I reached camp, I was greeted by Stan displaying exactly why he's an integral part of the mission. Back once again for the Renegade Master. Go on, keep going. Finish lyric. No, I wouldn't need uh, to. You don't know it, do you? No, I don't. Exposed. D4 damager. Power to the people. Back once again for the ill behaviours. I think that was actually the wrong lyric myself. It's all right. It's all right. No, if you own, if you own it enough, it's the new lyrics. Yeah, exactly. That's true. Right, just gotta make a fucking kill, I guess. How many calories are you going through at the moment? Five thousand and three. I've burned so far today. Yeah. That is a crazy I number of calories. It's mad hot, you know. Yeah, probably. Um, so this projected total is 5,589. I'm definitely not eating that many, I can tell you that, lad. You're losing a lot of weight at the moment. I have lost, yeah, I've lost a bit of weight. I kind of need to find a solution for that, really. So I've got abs again. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I can look at how f***ing white you are. Yeah, so white, isn't it? Actually, so white. It's ludicrous. But yeah, to get 5,500 calories, I'd have to eat approximately 14 fuels. Quite a lot, really. Yeah. Nearly a whole packet a day. We should look at ways of getting it in, though, because, like, 
oh mate, I have to start. I ain't got much more of it anymore. Yeah, exactly. I've gone through waves, you know, like I lost a load in Namibia. Then he had that break in Angola. I put loads back on, mm. then lost it all again. I think the breaks are the only reason they're still alive. Yeah. When you're crying, right? You enjoy that, mate. I thought you were going to go all the way then for a second. About 300 calories of water. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of efficiency we need. Uh, <sighs> How was the van driving yesterday, all right? Uh, yeah, driving fine. Yeah. It's still not good enough for the job, bless her. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Like, driving normally. Uh, on tarmac, it's all right. Yeah. And it should be tarmac pretty much here from here until Guinea. <laughs> <laughs> you got a friend, Stan? Yeah. F off, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're your friend now. <laughs>